left pocket and the right pocket. So the same procedure or process uh, I underwent in the other one is still the same thing I use. So after you finish the pocket, you now proceed in the other aspect of the sewing. So which comes next by taking the um, back part of the outfit, bring the front together this way. Now open up the back. Place it in this form. Then, first of all, try to arrange them how they should be. Then this is the how the decor should be. Then you hold the edge this way. Turn it back. Turn it back. Then sew from inside, right? Sew from inside. That's normal joining now, like you are just joining the jacket directly, you know. You will join the jacket directly and as well repeat the same process on the lining. Yeah. So you join the jacket half an inch, right? Not more than half an inch. Join it directly to the body. Then as well. Repeat the same thing for the, for the other side. Place it this way, and then take the jacket as well, and then place as well in this form. Join the shoulders of the jacket. Bear in mind that this jacket doesn't have that. No princess coats, except you want to put your own as per se fancy, right? You can now go ahead and put that, and then. But then, no need for that because it's free measurement. So right here, you join as well. Like I told you that the trimmings we are going to do will be done when cutting. No need to retrim the armhole again. So after you have done the joinings of the jacket, the next thing you're going to do now is as well, you bring the sleeve. You bring the sleeve. You notch the sleeve um, joining, that notch the edge this way, and as well, you place the sleeve, and then you can as well differentiate the left part of the sleeve from the right by deducting half an inch from this one edge half an inch from here that's making it to be fitted right you can as well do this if you so wish but if you don't want to do this you can proceed and join directly so i'm joining directly now the joining is coming from the shoulder now someone asked me why didn't i trim the shoulder now bear in mind that the outfit already is a free outfit you're not meant to um have it um as fitted as you might think but then if you still want to apply trimmings you can as well go ahead and trim that if you are working on precision that you want to have it fitted as you want fine it's your choice but i'm just i'm just trying to show us the coupling processes what and what you need to do and what you, um, you don't need to do so you can as well apply your shoulder and trim and then join the sleeve from the center joining of the front and back join from that part then place it this way join from that part so when you join make sure you stretch your sleeve as you are sewing right make sure you stretch your sleeve as you are sewing so that it will be able to get to the um, armhole then once you get to this point This is my stretching my sleeve now. So you go ahead as well to join the other sleeve. Bear in mind that the sewing comes from half center down, half center down. That's the easiest way to join your sleeve. Then when you must have joined it this way, And then you can see how 
I'll take my time now to join my sleeve. Make sure you sew half an inch. Don't sew more than half an inch. Always cut your threads and then you also repeat the same process on the other sleeve you have, right? So the same process on the other sleeve you have. The joining coming on the center edge. So I will also fix this sleeve and show you the fixing. So right now we have fixed our sleeves. That's um, the two sleeves, both the right and the left. And then the same thing we did or we have done on the body now is what we are also going to repeat on the lining, right? Yeah. So on the lining, we are also going to pick the sleeve as well there before we proceed. So I will do the lining sewing and then show you the results. Bring your lining as well. Um, continue from the same process, the same procedure. You bring the front together, the two fronts as well. You open it up this way and then you sew, right? So you are going to sew, make the same processes you have done the lining in your jacket. So you sew. And then this is one of the simplest stuffs you can do on this jacket. It shouldn't be hard. Half an inch closing. You close half an inch on the shoulder. Half an inch on the shoulder. Then you as well repeat the same stuff this way as well. Half an inch on the shoulder. And then you as well go ahead to join the sleeve to the um, lining that the lining sleeve to the lining right all the linings everything is going to be done differently one by one you cut the notch it and then you as well join the lining right So when you have gotten to this stage, you are making progress. Then you also join your lining mama the same way you join the sleeve. So when you have done your lining mama. So you also repeat the same processes you have done, just the same thing, nothing else, right? So I will pause the video and do it and then show you the results. Alright, so right now I have finished um, joining the sleeves of my lining to the lining and then the next thing I will do now is to lock up the lining, right? So when you have gotten to this stage, right, so it's as if you are making two clothes, so you fold the sleeve this way and then hold the sides. So what you just have to do is whatever on sleeve you have on, on your board, the one we used to cut was six inches, right? So you apply six inches at this at this um, um, fist of your lining. You apply six inches, and that's twelve now. You apply six inches. Now this is for the exact um, measurement we used to cut. Now for the round sleeve we used for our cutting. Of the outfit was um, 15 inches for the for the biceps, then um, 14 for the elbow, right? But then on the lining, please pay attention. You don't need to use exact of your elbow measurement here. You have to add extra half or one. The lining sh must be a bit bigger than the real closing of the fabric itself. So since the round sleeve for the lining was 14. For the main clothes were 14, I will use 15 um, for my lining for the elbow and then 
says the bicep measurement for the outfit was um, 15 I will use 16 for my lining right so after you have done that you now close and um, remember we used one and a half and we used them um, two inches for our um, outfit for the main body the lining will be a bit bigger than what you used in closing the main fabric so you have to mark one inch or one and a half inch for here depending on how you want it to be so i'm marking one and a half inch here one and a half 1.5 remember we use two inches allowance right so i will use one and a half to close the lining while the main fabric i will use exact of two inches to close so to give you that um allowance or ease for you to turn your line inwards so two inches so i'm going to run this now and then repeat the same process at the other sleeve so i'm going to run this now and then repeat the same process at the other sleeve if you so wish you can pin them and then um, mark your chalk so this is for my one side closing so I will repeat the same process I just said now on the other side and I will also show you the, the marking so that in case you do not get anything on this part you will get it on the other side so like I said on, on the other um, part, I was saying that um, the round sleeve I used to cut my jacket for the fist is 12, right? So 12 inches is what I used. 12 inches is what I used. Then I will mark the exact of the 12 inch on my fabric, on my lining. I will use the same fist here, right? 12 inches, that's 12, that's 6 by two now then i said the elbow for the jacket i marked was 14 but then on the lining i will use 15 to close reason being that the lining should be a bit bigger than so that it will give you ease to turn in walls then the um, um biceps was six or the, um, um, 15 that's 7.5 but i will use 16 in closing that's eight and i said that on the body of the fabric or outfit, I added two inches extra after the chest by four plus two. But then, in closing the lining, I will use one and a half inch to close as against two inches I added. The lining must be half inch or one inch bigger than the actual measurement you used in marking. So that was what I was saying at the other side. So I believe it must have been clear by now. And after the marking, you can now pin and then sew then you sew it out from the um, elbow then I believe you can now understand very well what I was doing then when, when you must have sewn it out this way make sure the sleeves are tied in here then Then when you must have sewn it that way now now if you so wish to put another pocket inside of your lining fine you can go ahead and repeat the same process you do you did on the main fabric and then locate your position of the pocket and then put your pocket that if you so wish but if you don't wish you can still leave it plain that way so this is the lining part of my fabric right so i have covered the lining as a different outfit all together and then this is the looks this is how it should be looking like you must have your lining sewn in this form so when you must have sewn the lining the next thing you're going to do now is to as well close the fabric in this form so you need your fabric as well then remember on our lining we used um six inches for the fist the same six inches you use for the fist is still what you are going to use for the um, um, fist of the fabric itself 
So you mark six inches, right? For the fist. You mark six inches for the fist. No. Oh. Now we, have, we want to cut the um, cover the sleeve. I have we done the other one, um, so I will also show you how this one was done of the last sleeve. So I said on the lining section, I said the lining fist was six inches. Use them six inches to close the fist, both the lining and the main material. But then on the lining we use um, seven and a half for the elbow. But here we are going to use the rear measurement we have on the board, which was fourteen. That's seven, right? Seven by two. And 14 by 2, 7. Then for the biceps, the biceps we used to cut the athlete was um, 15, 7 and a half. Whereas in the lining, we mark at 8. So we are going to mark 7 and a half, which I told us that the essence of the lining must be bigger than the fabric to give it ease or room for you to turn the fabric fine without the lining shrink, um, shrinking or trying to contract the main body of the outfit. So right here at the bottom of the lining we use 1.5 but right here we're going to use two inches making the lining to be bigger on the side right so that the lining will not be contracting the material in walls so you also repeat the same two inches right down because that was what we used in our markings of the lining um, of the material when we are cutting so when you have marked those two inches you can pin or you can as well proceed to um, direct sewing then when sewing, make sure that the beginning of your fabric is properly stitched so that it will not pull up easily. So take it from the feet down to the elbow and then from the elbow down to the bicep. And then coming to the bicep, you make sure that the edges or the, the, the joint points of the sleeves are tallying, right? Make sure that they are tallying and then hold it firmly and then push up the joining part front towards the sleeve and then make sure that you make give it a straight line so in here don't give it a curvy line it must be connected in a straight line don't give it a curvy line then connect to the two inches on the chest area and then take it right down the two inches on the center and then down to the sleeve down to the um the, the hem of the outfit so after you must have done that you will now um proceed to the next step of your sewing when you, when you must have done this now you, you are now done then drawn trim of the excesses here should in case your customer wants you to expand it leave it inside and then there's no need for you to weave reason being that the lining will cover it up or will seal it up so this is for the um, front body of the outfit and then i have done the back and then you turn it out to see the result of what you had been battling with all this right so this is the nature of your jacket and then bring it out so the next thing you're gonna do now is to start fixing your rubber right you should start fixing your rubber the rubber of the sleeve the neck area and the uh, the down the, the the hem area right so you must have gotten to this first stage by now before you start thinking about your rubber Follow the steps step by step, don't jump any step. So after you have done this now, it's not time for me to fix my rubber. Like as you can see, I have been putting on my rubber from the beginning of the of the video to now, so that I will not forget where to put the rubber from. So right now, this is my um, sleeve. So if you pick any of the rubber, it's still the same thing. And then, like I told us, I want the yellow area to be showing. I'm using the, the yellow stripe as my indicator to know the front and the back of the sleeve. So what do I have to do? Bear in mind that it was folded into two this way. If you don't get this nature of folding, let me know on the um, comment section for me to be able to um, verify or clarify us on how to do the band very well. But then, if I must clear off again, what I did was, remember the sleeve, um, the rubber measurement we had was um, was um, 6.5, was um, 6.5 or 6 inches. Okay, it was... Um, 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 four inches, right? Yeah, four inches rubber we had. The 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 four was um eight now. That's when it was open it was eight. That's four now. Eight bar. Then I said the the rubber we we the closing we come at half inch closing from here. That's having three point five. And after you must have sewn the line this way, you now 
turn it in you tuck it in you right tuck it in halfway making it to have this nature so when you, when you must have done that i now chose to use the yellow area the yellow and the green area as the front and then using the red and the navy blue or the green as the back so since the yellow is my front i'll be well guided on how to go about it then i will have to fix this sleeve at the at the at the hem of the um, edge of the fabric now so what then do i have to do you flip it over this way then bring your sleeve push it in this way then make sure that the joint part or the jointed part of the sleeve and the jointed part of the rubber must tally right make sure it's tallying then as you're sewing it you have to be stretching the rubber for it to go right around the sleeve that's the sense of the rubber fitting so that the rubber will contract the excess fabric or the fist to give you that bump, um, bumper effect you are looking for right so i will sew now and show you how i sew right here all i want to start joining the rubber to the body i was telling us that you must make sure that the center line of the sleeve joining tallies with the center line of the um, rubber joining right so hold the center very well and then make sure that when sewing you bring out the the material to tally don't allow the lining or sorry don't allow the rubber to be um longer or shorter than the material they must be of the same length and then you sew right make sure you're not sewing beneath so put it in this way then clip from the center so as you are sewing be stretching the rubber if you sew wish you can pin the rubber now right you can pin the rubber now so that you have a relaxed sewing but if you don't want to pin it there's no problem so be stretching the rubber as you are sewing the sleeve that's the only way you can fix it you cannot sew it without stretching the rubber so you must stretch the rubber as you are sewing so take it gradual, gradual by gradual stretch the rubber bear in mind that you're sewing the rubber for the double right so stretch it as you're sewing it make sure that, that, that the sleeve is properly inserted right don't make the sleeve to pull out later on make it to have a, 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 a nice um, um, finishing so stretch the rubber as you're sewing your sleeve right so as you're sewing you are turning it gradually it's going to give us a tight um, nature so when you sew stretch the rubber and then sew and then the sewing is going to give you like half an inch um, um, sewing so take it from here then stretch your rubber this way and then coming at the last part of the sewing you can see that the rubber is now enough to go right around my sleeve so that is the essence of um, stretching the rubber while sewing because if you don't stretch it enough it won't be enough but then don't overstretch the rubber so that it won't come out some plus at the edge of the fabric so when you stretch the rubber you stitch very well and then make sure you end your stitching out, uh, very well and then you now tuck it out this way and then this is how the edge or the um, the, the sleeve will look like make sure you cut your threads right make sure you cut your threads follow the process i'm doing don't jump don't assume just watch the video before you ask your questions and then the video will um, clarify us by the end of the video so this is the rubber and then this is the finishing effect it's giving me so as you can see it's very very fine by the time i put my sleeve my hand now it will come out and expand my sleeve will pass i will now sew so i will repeat the same process on the other side and then show you the finishing so right now i have finished fixing the rubber on the sleeve of my outfit and then i want to start doing the um the down rubber so this is a piece of rubber this is how it should look like right so if i can see it was fixed properly so if you um, um stretch it it will lapse and then this is the nature of the rubber right so i will now show you how to do the down rubber and then before you do the down parts remember the five inches by half inches we cut 
this is the measurement we had at the cutting processes and then we have to open up the rubber at this edge now open at this edge now place at the middle sorry place at the edge you have to run it half an inch right half an inch so it very important don't forget to do this sew it at the edge half an inch that when you must have gotten the exact length you want to use for your rubber now half an inch you sew it at the edge then when you must have sewn it at the edge you cut it off and then this is how it should look so you also repeat the same sewing at the edge of the other one half an inch as well remember the measurement was 5 by 5 you also sew at the edge of your rubber Then when you must have sewn at the two edges, it's now time for you to fix this, the band on the down part of the jacket. This is how it will look like when you must have finished sewing. So how then do you fix? Bear in mind that the yellow area is where I prefer to be outside. So you also determine where you want to be seen outside for you to appear so there won't be any mistake on your coupling processes. So right now, you first of all, cross check your measurements. Now, convention will tell you that the rubber will not get to the um, ending of the back part before the, the next sec, um, uh, front part shows. The rubber should be at least four to five inches shorter than the ending of this back so that the rest, so that the remaining will not be the stretching effect of your rubber, right? So, in a nutshell, let me give you the measurement I have in totality of my rubber and my 5 inches additions. The measurement I had, or I have here, is, um, is um, uh, a total length of um, 33. 33, right? Then, on my jacket, zip inclusive, zip inclusive, I have a total length of, um, this is a... Um, the total length of um, 50, 53 and a half, right? So that means I have um, roughly 20 inches shorter rubber length. So the, the, so that the 20 inches will be the stretching effect your rubber will have, depending on how stretchy your rubber is. Don't forget, it's very important as well. So right here, for me to start fixing my rubber, you fold, you, you, you bring up, you bring the fabric in this form right then turn it over again start from the zip allowance from the five inches and half you are five inches added then you start joining the rubber then start from here start joining the rubber then when you are sewing on getting to the point that your rubber is joined with the, well, with the fabric you now, you now stitch that point then you now start to stretch the rubber out before you continue sewing right you can pin at this on this at this point at this point you stretch the rubber stretch it to the neck to the to the highest point that the rubber and the fabric with with um, correspond make sure it's well stretched so that it's slapping right so you hold to an extent for you to see the, the extent you can sew, you can pin at this point and then you can sew freely. But if you don't want to pin, you can stretch it, make sure it's slapping properly, right? After you have seen it slapping properly, hold middle, like halfway, where you can sew. Hold it firmly, don't allow it to contract again, and then you go ahead to sew. Make sure that the fabric under and the rubber are tallying. Right? So when you must have sewn to that point you held, you release the rubber and then you stretch again. You stretch again. Hold them equally this way. You stretch again, making them to laugh, and then you hold another part. 
and then move it 10 minutes, right? And then it starts to eat. Make sure that, okay, my, my shuttle is finished. Let me reel and then continue from there. Right now, I have um, fixed my reel and my shuttle on there. And then you continue from where you stop. The same process, like I said, right? So when you stretch your fabric, when you stretch it, you hold it and see the highest stretching effect on nature on your jacket. Then make sure you sew from the rubber side. Then having seen the maximum stretching nature, then you make sure that the edge here, the joint part is open, like right? Make it to be open and then you continue make it to be flattened right right so you must you must take a time to do this flatten it and then you continue from that part so depending on how stretchy the rubber is that is what will determine how more and um, the length of the stretchy nature, right? So you so some of the rubbers are a bit stronger than others, while some are more stretchy than others. So this is how the back you cut off the threads. This is how the back should look, right? So by the time you draw it out, it relaxes and then contracts. So having done the rubber part, then the next step you want to do now is um, fixing up your um, collar. Your collar, uh, your collar comes in next, um, then followed by your zip, and then lastly by your lining. So remember, I told us that one and a half inch, one and a half inch is for our zip allowance. So you place your one and a half inch mark. Make sure you get your one and a half inch. Use your tape to, to dig it out. One and a half inch mark. Right? Don't forget. You, you mark the one and a half. Then at, at that point, you notch it. You notch to know where your zip allowance ends. So right now, I told us that the opening on the neck collar or the neck it's like 1.5 to 2 inches so you can as well from the cent from the point of the zip ending the point of the zip ending you can mark 1 inch making it 2 inches or 0.7 making it 1.5 so I will use um, 0.8 that's somewhere here somewhere here and then that means this is where my um, my collar we start from and go to the back so what you now do roughly what you have to do is you measure the base measure it so i have um, 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 18 and a half here so you bring your collar as well fold into two like i told you that the collar used to stretch when fixing so even though you get a collar it must um, expand more than what you have thought so you cross check from the point this is the center now you cross check it from the back this way and then draw it a bit and then i think it's giving me what i want so this is what I will use to fix my color. So how then do I go best? Don't forget that the yellow aspect of the area is the is where I'm using as my indicator for the front. So I will just have to start this way from the 1.5 inch I marked, right? You push in the edge of the color to enter inside of your um, the point you want to stop. That's the point. Then you pin your machine, you pin your machine, and then you make sure you hold the fabric, the color, to be equal, and then you start at that point to sew. Make sure as you are sewing, you sew from the rubber aspect. Now, don't stretch the rubber. The rubber should be relaxed, 
but then on its own it will be stretching because of the machine foot pressure on it right so you sew on the rubber and then take it gradually don't stretch it don't draw it like you did on the damper no leave it firm leave it to be to be free then sew on the rubber take your time sew on the rubber make sure your sewing is holding the rubber and the fabric firmly then on approaching the front neck area like i told you the the rubber tends to ex expand on its own then you're not the one to trim it off to have it stopping to stop at the exact point you want it to be so remember we marked 0.7 or 0.8 for the rubber so you also repeat the same marking from the um notch point you i stopped at 0.8 that's somewhere here that means the rubber should not surpass this point so having it having seen that this is where it should stop so, so from that point now i'll now retrim my neckline again so i will retrim again and then show you you now retrim the edge right so that the rubber will not surpass the point you want it to stop so it's now getting to that point this is where i want it to stop so you make sure this at exact of the point you want it to be so don't allow it to surpass the point so that it will tally with the front part of the outfit so when you must have done it that way turn it that way then you flip it over and then cross check what you have sewn and now it's giving me a nice looks of finishing so you can as well trim off the excesses here no, trim it off. Then, if there is anyone here, you trim it off. So that's not there. So right here, we are done fixing the um, collar. So the next we're, we're gonna do now is to fix the zip, and then after the zip, we fix our lining. Right. So I'll fix my zip now. So right here, we have um, fixed our collar, and then we want to fix our sleeve. And then after our zip, and then our zip, like I told us, the length is more than 24. So what you need to do now, before you start using your zip, then come to the down edge of your fabric, right? Come to the down part of your fabric. Make sure that you fold the jacket to get the center fold. That's having your yellow, your your your, your inch left this way. Then notch the middle. For you to know the center, right? Not the middle, not the center. The yellow indicator is the is the edge, right? So you can also use your chalk to mark to know where your folding stops from. Repeat the same process on the other side. Fold it into two this way, right? Now having the knowing the center line. Put into two this way, knowing the center line. You can also measure if you so wish, so that you exact, if you exact, then you, you notch, right? So after you have notched, then for you to be sure of what you are doing, you as well measure from the notch point to the joining, it's giving me and um, two inches exact. So as well, cross check this one as well from the notch point, giving me two inches as well, right? So after you have after you must have done that, then you start to fix your zip. Then how do you start? You pull off your zip. This is how the zip should be, right? So and then my jacket, I don't top stitch on top of the zip this way. I don't sew on top of the zip. I don't like having my sewn lines being seen outside. Since you are doing invisible stitching, do it all right round. So since having known that this part is the part of the zip. Now I open the zip, right? I pull it off. Take the corresponding one that will that will run to this part, then face it down this way because after sewing we need to turn it over because of zip allowance. So face it to start from the point your zip allowance will start from, right? Your 1.5 inch. Make sure that whatever you are doing, 
you are keeping to measurements. The 1.5 you have already used for the zip allowance. Make sure you keep to your measurements. Don't exceed or um, um, go below the measurement. So start from that point and then you start sewing. So right here, you must start sewing your zip from the from the down to the upwards to the neck. Reason being that the zip edge must be seen at the damp part of your jacket. So right here, you sew. But then, while sewing, make sure you don't stitch at the at the at the um, tits of your zip because any stitch you have done there will spoil the free movement of the reel of the zip. So right here, you start sewing, giving room. For your zip um, edge to come in right so right here you take your time sew it this way bear in mind i'm sewing from the inside take your time make sure that the zip teeth is slapping at the 1.5 inch mark you have so right here you take your time as well to do the sewings A gradual process don't mean a head right for those of us that might be new in fixing zips take your time to do this so after I must have done this now I will as well repeat the same process on the other side of my fabric and then show you the outcome so right here I'm done running the zip from the inside then I'll flip it over this is how the zip sewing should look like right so this is how it should look like the sewn lines should not be seen it should be done inside right so this is how it should be and then after I must have sewn this now I will repeat the same process on the other side of the zip and then show you as well. So right here, as you can see, as I have finished fixing my zip, and this is how your zip should look. I make sure that the edges are equal and tallying with the down the one here, it should be equal as well. And then when you have fixed your zip, the next thing you are going to do now is your lining. So you open it up and then you bring your lining. Bring your lining. Bring your lining, then the, the right sides facing each other. The right sides facing each other. That's the front of the material facing the seal part of the, of the lining. Place it this way, right? Place it this way, and then you start sewing. Right sides facing each other. Then you start sewing. When you start sewing, so normally, when you get to the point the Ankara stops, you now start stretching your fabric. The same process you went on joining the rubber to the fabric is what you also undergo joining the lining to the um, rubber. Then you stretch as well. Stretch the same method to use stretch as well and then hold the point and then you sew making sure that the lining and the rubber are corresponding the same method you are doing to what you also repeat so you stretch the lining and so the rubber and then hold the line firmly and then make sure you open the folded edges properly. You can pin 
if you saw wish, but the, the easiest one is the one I'm doing now, stretch it, making sure that it's slapping properly, then you hold and fold. As well, stretch this one, stretch it, and fold, and so. Make sure that the lining is properly fixed the same way you fixed your um, fabric in the loader. Same process as well. And then make sure that it's open. And you can as well fold it with a pin. So right here, you see the work is almost done. All you need to do now, you have, have finished sewing the lining, right? So you now go to the neck area, the neck region, right? Now, don't forget that. It's um, the same methods we're going to use now. Now hold, um, fix, push in this different side. Bring it out this way. Now come to the neck area. Bend the collar to come inwards. Bend it to come inwards. Bring the corresponding part of the lining making sure that the shoulders are tally the shoulder points to the shoulder of the lining must tally that's the jointed points right make sure that tally if you have your pin pin at those edges pin at those edges then as well correspond the one on the other parts now, if you know that you should stretch a bit, then pin the make sure that the shoulders must tally, right? They must tally. Then when it's tallying, you bring it down this way, and then you can now start sewing from the tip of the line in here, or if you want to start from the middle, but it's better one from the middle middle down middle down right so make sure after pinning the edges of the center line then start from the middle this way of the fabric then sew it down then Make sure your sleeves are out, right? Hold the line down this way, and then sew. Then remove the pin, and then sew. Make sure that the rubber is tucked in properly, relax. Then sew in that direction relax the edge here make sure what you're sewing now is covering the line used in holding down the rubber to the fabric then when come to, coming to the zip area you, you can as well jump the zip so that you not spoil your needle right so jump that area and then sew from this point 
So when you get to that point, now you are meant to sew the lining clothing should be sewn on top of the zip. That's the same way as if you were fixing the zip to the lining, right? So, but then I use the machine footer to rest at the edge of the zip track or zip teeth and then I sew the, 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 the excess inward this way. Then, bear in mind that you are trying to have it in a neater finishing, right? So, this is the process you must undergo. Take your time to do this. Don't be in a haste. So, when you sew, make sure that your lines are running on top of the zipper. But not at the tito, but on top of the um, um, rubber-like or the, the uh, cotton-like edge of it. Right? So this is how, now coming to this point now, you now fold here inward this way. So this should have been at this part. So I will take my time to fix any error coming out from here. So right here. Fold the edge and then continue your sewing down to this part so you can now comfortably say you have finished your um, this part. Then the next part you will do next is the other side, the same process you went. Do the same thing and before you sew the zip, make sure and um, you tuck it out. The sleeves must be tucked out from the body, right? Then you try to constrict the lapping so you can as well start from here from the inside to sew the next part of the aspect. So when you when you want to sew that this last part, you must be centered enough. So what you are doing now is one of the last stages of the sewing. So you start from that some point to start there, and then sew it in a way that the old line must be covered, right? Then remove your needles, your pin as well, and then stretch the bit to make it come to, to the edge this way. Then stretch it a bit. Make sure that your old lines are covered with your new stitch right here. So when you get to this stage now, you are almost done with your outfit, right? So take your time in doing this. All your sewings you must cover your old lines so that you have a neater finishing or a neater look. They are coming to the zip, zip part of the axis. You must make sure you, you jump the teeth so that you do not break your needle, right? So jump the teeth of the teeth, jump it, and then continue from the edge. Then coming to the zip section, like I said, make sure you are lapping the footer beside the teeth of the zip. Then you cover. Then, when you must have gotten to this stage, the work is over. It's now left for us to cut 
couple the sleeve lining to the main fabric sleeve. So we will take our time as well to arrange this and then I will show you the next process we will go. Knowing the fact that the zip edge is here, is strong here, you have to be patient enough how you push or how you sew, right? So after you must have sewn that, the next thing you are going to battle with now is how to seal the sleeve to be right? So this is how it's looking. So what you have to do is that when you bring your sleeve this way, pop the sleeve material in, right? Put it in, then bring the corresponding sleeve, the lining, open it up this way, right? Then push it in from here. So from inside and not from outside. So from inside of the round circumference of the sleeve. From that point, you hold it firmly, right? And then we start sewing. But make sure you take your time to do all this. Don't be in a haste. So, I will as well repeat the process I have said in the other sleeve. So, as you are sewing, make sure you stretch the, 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 the rubber so that if you go right around the lining, Make sure you are stretching the rubber aspect of it to make sure it's going right around the lining. So right here, we are sewing the sleeve to the lining. Bear in mind the direction we are taking, right? So as you are sewing, make sure as well you are stretching the sleeve. Stretch the rubber at the, at the Edge as you are sewing, stretch it, don't allow it to be plain. Stretch and sew, stretch and sew. That is the only way you can have it properly sewn. Then, when you must have stretched and gotten the exact of the circumference, you leave the stretching effect and then focus on lap, making it lap properly. Then, when you get to this stage now, you are done with one sleeve. I will repeat the same process on the other sleeve as well for clarity sake so that you will not have any confusion while doing this. This is one of the simplest methods and ways you can do this. Right here, we are done with this, and then the next thing we are going to do now is to repeat some process on the last thing. This is how it should be, right? After joining, this, this is how your sleeve should be. This one will be sewn from inside, top thing. So, the next one you are going to do now is the other sleeve, which I said. Um, this is the rubber, right? This is the rubber. This is how the rubber is, right? I said you have to tuck it in inwards, right? Your sewing will start from inside and not outside. So you place this lining inside this way and sew around. So the same way you did that one, you also bend the lining edge this way, right? Bend it this way, and then locate where this one is and pally the, the jointed part get the sewing from the inside so this one the outside why this one this why this one the inside so get it from the inside that's the only way you can get it correctly if you do alternatively you might not get the results you are looking for so right here we have our sleeve being joined with the last sleeve and this is the last part of our jacket. 
After this now, you are done with the whole jacket. I'll show you how to bring it out. So right here, you stretch the sleeve. You must stretch the sleeve. And then you sew from inside. Make sure you stretch while sewing. You don't need the sleeve to be plain. The main um, um, fabric to be plain. Stretch the rubber aspect so that it can lap properly. Stretch it and then and so so this is the last part of our bumper jacket and i believe by the end of this video all of us will be able to um, make it show the results and then continue make it two or three times for you to perfect don't make it once and assume that you have seen it or known it no make it two or three times for it perfect. So right here, you sew this way, and then you make sure you sew the last part of the sleeve correctly. If there should be any case whereby the lining is being excess, you can print a piece so that to give you a relaxing effect, right? So after you must have sewn this. Then you can mostly say you are done with your jacket. So the next thing you're going to do now is to lose where you bring bring it out from. So I like to use the sleeve to turn it out. So how then do I mean? Lose like five inches gap, right? Lose the sleeve from the arm area, the elbow area. Lose like five inches gap. That's make an opening ranging from 2 to 5 inches right you take your seam ripper move it from this form and then when you have loose from that form you try to make sure it's open enough so that you can bring out your material from there take your time to lose you would have left the opening when sewing right but then if you see close it you can still lose it later on so you lose it by five inches thereabouts here you know that will be enough to bring out the sleeve so from here now you bring you push in your hand to the material turn it out this is where you now push the rest of the material out then you can now say you are done with your Sewing. So you make sure that the whole of the material goes out from the sleeve. Take your time to do this. Cock it in this way. Cock it in everything, right? Both the lining and everything should be tucked in from there. And then you draw it out from the and run through second frames, right? So this is where the whole components will come out from. So you take your time to do this. Do it bit by bit. Don't tear your material while doing this. Do it gradually, bit by bit, right? Do it bit by bit. I'll take my time to do this and then show you the result. So I will as well be drawing it out little by little don't be confused this is the easiest way you can do this right because the material is big enough that's why it will take you time to come out but when you keep, don't tear your material when while drawing don't put all of them inside at once try to put it gradually like half and half put it in this way Plug it in this way and make it to come out from the sleeve. So I will take my time now to turn it and show you the finishing. So this is the turning out of your fabric from the inside lining. You take your time to join it out. Draw it gradually, right? 
Don't be in a haste. Don't tear it. All of them will come out. Then, bear in mind that you must repeatedly watch this process before you can say you have plants this current in. So, when you must have drawn out the whole SSCs, you now take your time to bring it out from the other edge. You can enough pockets here, put your stick in, and now draw it out. So, right here, we have our bumper jacket, neatly sewn and well covered, right? So, right here, this is the finishing effect we are looking for, right? So, I will put it on a dummy and then show you the fitting and then go inside to make do a video on it. So, right here, we want to test our fabric on our, on our dummy, but then before then, take a look at the inside finishing, right? This is how your own should be, if not better than this, right? This is how your own should be, if not better than this. Make sure you draw out the line, the threads there, and then look at the place we we open for the lining on the sleeve. This is the place. So later on, you can use hand needle to tack, or you can now hold this way and top stitch and close it. So by so doing, you have achieved a neat finishing inside. This is how it is done, right? So if you also know any other methods easier for you, you can go ahead but then this is my method i use in making my own jacket so i will hang it on the dummy and show you the fitting on the dummy so right here this is our jacket this is the finishing and then all of us can see how good it's looking right so this is how you will do your own jacket and then i pray look at the sleeve finishing this is how the sleeve should be right it should be all sewn in walls so Watch this video over and over again and make sure you try to memorize the areas of concentration before we proceed to the next part of the learning. So thank you for watching and then I pray all of us arrive at a neat finishing this way. Thank you all.